Welcome to the Observer's Direct, the show where we go meet our observers face to face. This week, one of our observers is going to tell us more about the clothing that so many of us around the world are wearing, the jeans and t-shirts sold by big American and European brands. Moses says that much of this clothing is made in his country, Cambodia, by workers that are paid next to nothing. He says they're tired of being exploited and are starting to rebel. He took our journalists to meet these angry men and women. Hello, Moses. Nice to meet you. How are you? So, Moses, why did you want us to come to Phnom Penh? Thousands of thousand workers are working inside in this park. They're making clothes, they're making shoes. $100 for a new salary now is minimum wage. $100 for minimum wage now. It's not enough for one worker to live inside in Phnom Penh. They work over 10 hours. Uh, uh, for the whole weeks, but only one day they have left uh, for the holiday. But sometimes the holiday, the, the owner of the factory asks for overtime also. And so people are angry because they feel they should be paid more. Uh, the big protest in Cambodia is starting like uh, back in 24th of December last year, and it's coming till uh, even till now. They're not finished the protesting for that. Moses asked to meet at one of Phnom Penh's largest industrial parks. There are dozens of factories here, supplying major European and American brands. We try and visit them during the lunch break. How old are you? 18. 18, sir. 18 years old? My daughter's 18. I'm 40. She's been here a year and a half. There is strict legal framework in place for child labor in Cambodia, but it doesn't really work in practice. Once they reach 14 years old, a lot of minors start working the same hours as adults. We're soon spotted by security staff, and despite our efforts, we're refused entry. You'll be in trouble. And we are escorted away. High street brands like Gap, Adidas and H&M use subcontractors, often Chinese or Korean-owned companies, to make their clothing. The factories are represented by the Garment Manufacturers Association in Cambodia, the GMAC. We meet the president at his equestrian center. As far as price is concerned, we are cheaper than Vietnam, about the same as Burma, and more expensive than Bangladesh. We're lucky compared to other countries like China, Malaysia or Vietnam because we've been granted duty-free access to the European market. But productivity is lower here. Cambodians don't work as hard as the Vietnamese. They're somewhat lazy. The International Labour Office says the right to strike is being violated in Cambodia. He disagrees. No. Convention 87, which has been signed by countries all over the world, does not say it is an automatic right. No. The International Labour Office is lying. The right to strike is not an automatic right. The tycoon agrees to show us around the factory, a model establishment run by a Chinese businessman. Today's a public holiday. Why are you working? I don't have to, but we're paid double. I work from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. six days per week, except on Saturdays when I finish at 4 p.m. Do you know what brand you're working for? What brand? Marks and Spencer. And do you think you're paid fairly? Yes, but I'd like to earn a little more. This factory makes clothes for the US brand Target and European companies H&M and Marks and & Spencer, retail giants that claim in the media to take the workers' demands very seriously. Your workers are paid $8 per day, and they say this isn't enough to live on because there has been massive inflation in Cambodia. What would you say to them? That it's not true. 
It's not true. If they couldn't survive, then we wouldn't have 700,000 workers going into work every day. They would stay at home. No one's forcing them to go to work. No one has a gun to their head. It's not forced labor. Uh, it's a product that costs uh, 14.95 euros. Retail. 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 Uh, how much do you sell this to H&M? About uh, 420 US dollars. Would you be able to raise the wages up to 160? No, we cannot. We cannot. Unless the buyer is going to pay higher price. Do you think they'd take their business to a different country if you asked them to do that? I guarantee it. Are you sure they'd leave? They say they wouldn't. They're still here. They still pay $4. If they paid $8, then we'd raise the wages. Right here, right now. Cambodian trade unions went on strike for over a week in January and staged massive protests. Police launched a brutal crackdown. At least three people were killed and dozens of others injured. The businessmen say police were just responding to violence. The protesters were armed and dangerous. But we went to talk to some textile workers and they told a very different story. I was filming with my telephone. I decided to go home because I'd seen two people get hurt and I was a bit scared. And then I was hit by a bullet. I was shot as I was turning to leave. I fell to the ground. Did any of the protesters have weapons? We only had stones. They had guns and they fired at us. They also went to workers' rooms and beat them up. What do you think needs to change to help textile workers? $80 is barely enough to cover the rent. We were only asking for $160 per month. People were killed and injured during January's protests, and 23 workers and union organizers were arrested and taken to prison, charged with inciting violence. Two have since been released, but 21 remain in custody. Our observer, Moses, takes us to Phnom Penh's Court of Appeal to see if they get granted bail. But we haven't seen the, the detainee uh, that is supposed to be brought uh, from the prisons uh, to be here, but uh, only the lawyer were inside uh, the courtroom. The families are waiting outside the courtroom, and several dozen protesters have gathered outside the building. Most of them are optimistic and think the prisoners will be released but they're wrong. The judge had appeal, they decided to not release today. Some people, including some Buddhist monks, try to stage a demonstration in front of the royal palace, but the police arrive en masse and the protesters are soon dispersed. It's difficult for the workers to make their voices heard and defend their legal rights. So we decide to contact some of the European and American clothing giants to see what they have to say. We tried the Cambodian representatives for H&M, Gap and Adidas, amongst others, but they all refused to meet us. So we try our luck and turn up without an appointment at the H&M offices in Phnom Penh. You're Mr. Bashir. OK, nice to meet you. I'm Julian. I'm, I'm a journalist at France 24. No, could you please turn off the camera? Please. I just have one question no, to ask no, you. Please. Why H I'm repeating that I'm not the person to talk about this. But you're in charge of the office here. But I'm not in charge of talking to me here. Some companies, H&M for one, say they would be prepared to raise the minimum wage and suggest the problem lies with the Cambodian authorities. An official from the Ministry of Labour agrees to talk to us. We have to proceed on a step-by-step -step basis. We've already raised their salary from $80 to $100. That's a $20 increase. The big international firms say they are ready to increase wages, but the government has stopped this from happening. They say it is corrupt. How do you respond? This has nothing to do with corruption. We need to focus on what the factories and retailers can do. If they can come to an agreement, then we can renegotiate. 
but we can't force either party to increase wages immediately. There were large-scale protests recently and they were harshly repressed. Do you regret this or do you think there was no other choice but to resort to violence? The police have to do something when workers wreak havoc and start throwing Molotov cocktails at them. The government and police intervene to ensure stability and to put an end to the violence. So business and common order are the priority. The most important thing is to ensure an environment of peace, security and political stability in Cambodia so investors keep coming here. The retail giants of factories the government, they all blame each other for the wage freeze. While they enjoy significant profits, textile workers are told to be patient, do as they're told and be thankful for the small wage increase given in January. But Moses remains hopeful. For the first time ever, Cambodia's textile workers took a stand and exercised their rights. Of course, we'll stay in touch with our observer Moses to find out if Cambodian workers get the salary hike they're so desperately fighting for. Now, if there's a problem in your community that you think the world needs to know about, get in touch and maybe we'll come see you for the next episode of Observers Direct.